All right, so we've got everything out now, and uh, we can go through all our different parts. We've got our slotted body tubes. We've got our motor mount tubes. There's two of those. Your nose cones, if you only see one in the pack, don't worry. They pack them two in a pack on top of each other, so it's easy to get confused. And then we have the back ends. The back ends have a slot cut into them to accept the, uh, it's the way that they're hooked onto the body tube. We've got our engine hooks, our uh, mounting rings, our engine blocks. They come down on streamers and included is some Kevlar cord. Remember, always keep your plastic bag. If you're going to be doing any uh, CA or super glue, it's not going to stick to the plastic bag, so you can do it right on top of the plastic bag and not worry about having things stick to your uh, worktop. Uh, so we're going to need, obviously, uh, plastic glue. We're going to need some white glue or wood glue. Uh, I tend to use wood glue for attaching fins and pieces of wood to body tubes. I use white glue for inserting motor mount rings and uh, centering rings and motor blocks because you, the white glue is slipperier. It gives you a little bit more time to slide that tube in or that ring on where the wood glue grabs a lot quicker and you'll get halfway in and it stops and you're stuck. Uh, we have uh, these parts are really neat. They actually have a slight curvature to them. They, there are some uh, molding marks where you might need to do some sanding to get rid of the, the molding marks. But they already have a conformical shape and they fit perfectly. It's one of the reasons I picked the bag bond. They actually fit perfectly to the diameter of the bag bond. So there's not any uh, gaps or anything like that. So it's a real good uh, match up to that. There's other rockets of the same body diameter that will work. I just thought the bag bomb would be a really good one. We've got our two uh, spines or splines. This is the unique part. This is what hooks into the whole thing and gets it together. There's a notch in the one end. That actually locks in down here. And that's the bottom part. The top part, the nose cone, has a notch in it, like I said. And that actually locks into that part there. So when you hook it to your rocket, that part sticks through and when you put your nose cone on it locks it into place so now it's not going anywhere and when the the perhaps i've got the wrong slot here that's the bottom there's the top or i did have it right excuse me <laughs> so now it locks it into place so when you slide your nose cone in It's going to lock everything into place, and when it blows the nose cone off, now everything can fall away. So it's a really neat design that uh, Tim has from Apogee. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start getting things ready. Uh, obviously, we also have our little uh, block that I made for letting the parts dry, where I need to make sure that they stay straight up and down. It's uh, great for when you have fins drying. Um, also, we're going to have various grades of sandpaper. Remember, you want to scuff your tubes up a little bit with uh, the sandpaper. If it's shiny, the glue is not going to get a good chance to grab as good as it could if you scuff it up a little bit. So scuff up your tubes. Uh, I even scuff up my little motor mount tubes uh, to make sure that they're good. You can use like a 200 grit sandpaper to scuff up for paint uh, for glue purposes. Um, so we got our motor hooks, our Kevlar cord, everything's here. So we're ready to go ahead and start uh, sanding everything down and uh, marking it up. So uh, go over our tools that we're going to be using here in a minute, and then we'll get to get to the build. All right. So for this build, we're going to be using some various tools. Of course, we need our Exacto knife with fresh Exacto blade, and uh, I would always recommend having a couple extra Exacto blades on hand. Fresh blades. Every time I start a new project, I put on a new blade. Uh, nothing will mess up a cut faster than a dull blade, whether you're cutting balsa wood, uh, body tube, or plastic, or anything else. So always start off with a fresh blade. We've got our plastic glue. I've got various types of CA glue or super glue. I also have the accelerator or kicker, as they call it. Uh, again, our white glue used for uh, motor mounts and things that I don't want to, the glue to grab really quick. My wood glue that is used for 
anytime I'm uh, gluing something on the outside like fins or the splines in this case and I want the glue to grab quickly. I've got various types of scissors of different sizes and shapes. Tweezers come in handy every now and then. Uh, a couple of different devices for measuring and uh, drawing my straight edges. Uh, I also have a, a, a pencil, mechanical pencil. I never use a marker because it will bleed through the paint. I also have uh, angle aluminum. Uh, this is great for when you have to mark a, a tube along its entire length. You set it in there and you can draw a line all the way up and that line is going to be straight all the way through. And it doesn't matter how big the tube is. This works on any size tube. I use this on a four inch tube. Uh, I'll be using it on my four inch frenzy when I use it. So you can't go too small where it falls inside and you can't get you know, a, a good line on it. You can't use the edge. But if that edge sits on the tube, you can draw your straight line. And it works a little bit better than a door frame. Uh, some door frames aren't that straight. So uh, other things we're going to have, again, I've got my little cradle that I use. I made this out of a 2 by 4 route it out a hole, or use a table saw to route it out a hole down the center, cover it with felt, uh, various grades of sandpaper, sandpaper on wooden dowels. This is for sanding inside a body tube, or you can sand on the outside. This is great for sanding fillets on fins, too, if you use epoxy clay. So the, that's what we're going to be using for this build. And we're going to start to sand up the tubes first. We're going to use some uh, 220 on the tubes to scuff them up really good. And then we'll mark them up and get them ready for uh, the first assemblies. All right, so we're going to assemble the first mounting tube. We've lightly sanded it, scuffed it up so it's not nice and shiny, which means the glue can grab it. We're going to make a couple of different marks. Our first mark is going to be two and a quarter inches up from the bottom. And our second mark is one half inch up. And that second mark is going to be where our lower centering ring is. So what I like to do to make sure I have the centering ring straight is I like to make sure I have a mark all the way around the tube. So I'll mark my tube, then I'll put it in my angle iron with something to brace it, and I'll turn the tube. And now I have a mark going all the way around the body, or the, the motor tube, so I know that I've got my ring square when I put my ring on. Now we're going to cut a notch in one of our rings and this is to pass the shock cord for the streamers. So we just cut a small notch in that ring and you can see that notch right there in the shadow between my front right there. There it is. You can see it really well there. So that's going to be where our shock cord passes through. Now we have to check for fit. We want to make sure that these are going to fit on there. That's a little tight. That's a little tight. So we're going to sand these. And this is where having sandpaper on a wooden dowel comes in handy. So we're going to go around. We're going to sand. Flip around. Go the other way. Or you can put it on a tabletop and just try and hold it flat and roll it while you're sanding. We'll do a dry fit. So that one slides on there nice and easy now. We'll give it just a little bit more. Remember, you want to sand a little bit, check, sand a little bit, and check. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back on after you take too much off. So that's a nice, easy slide. Our other one's a little tight, so we'll sand it. This is the one with the notch. Don't get your rings confused. We want to make sure you use the right ring for the right part. I generally laid out all my parts like you see here for an assembly. I lay out, if I'm selling multiple motor tubes, I'll only lay the parts out for one at a time to prevent confusing mul multiple parts together. So, and then that one fits pretty good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our tube for the motor hook. You could probably go motor hookless and just use a friction fitting or tape fitting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the motor hook. Remember what I said about the sharp exacto knife? Brand new blade always works best. And then we're just going to poke our little hole in there. 
I want to make sure that it's wide enough for a motor hook. And what I tend to do is stick my finger in the hole so I don't collapse my tube and wiggle my hook in. Now how do we make sure we have our hook straight and it's not cockeyed? Uh, same way we did with everything else. We're going to grab our hang line and now that I've got a hole I can draw a straight line from one edge of that hole all the way down my motor tube. And now I've got a line to line up on with that hook. So I can take the hook, set it in the hole, and line it right up there. Now we're mounting our ring ahead of this line. We don't want it towards the aft, we want it towards the nose. So I tend to, that's the notched one, that's going to go on top. Slide the ring on just a little bit. They recommend wood glue, but again, I like using white glue for my rings just because it doesn't grab too quick and it gives you time to wiggle and play with things. So a very light bead around it, and I'm going to smear that. I'm going to try and keep the smear right alongside the line. I'm not wiping it all off either. I'm just smearing it along that line. I keep two rags in my lap. Uh, one is a wet rag, and that's what I wipe my finger off initially when I have glue on it. And then I have a dry rag. <coughs> Excuse me, cardboard desk. I have a dry rag, and I turn around and wipe my uh, um, finger off after I get it dried or get the glue off. I wipe it on that. So now we're going to take and slide our hook on. Got to make sure we're lined up on that line. It's going to be a little tight because we add it some mass with that hook it's lined up we'll push it straight up and I see my line so I stop kind of look around fudge it where I have to and I'm going to wipe my extra glue off and what I wiped off I'm going to use to make a little fillet around the bottom part Clean my finger and I wipe off any excess that I smeared there. All right, so now we've got our bottom ring in place. Now I've got our top ring. We're going to check it for fit again, and it fits pretty good. Let me give it just a little bit more center. That's kind of tight. Okay, so now we're going to take our shot cord. They send it as one long shot cord. You cut it in half. And we're going to tie that to the body tube. Uh, you want to make a slip loop, basically. So you're going to take, go around the tree, up and over, through the hole, back around the tree, and then back down the hole. And remember, one end slides in and out, the other two ends you cinch down. So now I've got a tight knot that I can cinch up around my motor tube. So I can put that on my motor tube. I can cinch that down. Just enough to keep it from moving around. thread my ring on and I'm actually going to make sure that that notch is where the thread goes and this is a Kevlar thread again and I'm going to feed that onto the tube because it lets me do it. If it's one time it doesn't the next. Try that one more time here. Amazing how many times you can try something that fits fine, and the first time you want to do it for real, it doesn't fit. Okay, back to the ring, up to the motor tube. Make sure we're in the notch. And there we go. So now this one's going to flush mount with the end, so I'm going to push it past a little bit. I'm going to pull my string down. Excuse me. 
Let me put our blue bead on. And then we're going to smear it. That plastic just fell somewhere. There it is. I told you to keep your plastic. There it is. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to push this down flush, pop it up. Hey, no glue on my desk. And wipe that off the plastic real easy. And clean up any funky glue on the end. And I can push my Kevlar thread up closer. I'm going to trim off this tag end just a little bit. Having really, really sharp scissors helps here. These are not as sharp as they used to be. There we go. Now, if you want to keep your knot from slipping, there's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, make sure you have your knot down flat for one. And then you can take and put a drop of CA glue on it. Uh, thin works really good because it'll soak into the knot and it'll grab it all up. So you just put a drop of CA on there. And now that's going to prevent the knot from slipping. And if you're not sure if it went around, you can take plastic and smear it a little bit. Now we're going to pass this string. through the body tube, but we have to glue in our other block. So we're going to put our glue on the inside, just like that. Do a little smear around with our pinky or whatever finger you can get in the hole. And we're going to slide this up to that retention ring, the engine hook. So now that's got that locked in place. Now we can let it dry, and after it dries, we're going to drop this through to keep it out of the way during the rest of the assembly. Just like that, or you can hang it like this while it's drying, which is what I tend to do. So now we've got our two motor mount assemblies ready, and we'll get on to the next step. All right, for this next assembly, um, you're going to see that I actually skipped step one to do the motor mount, and then I'm going to come back to step one. Uh, step one, you're gluing the spline onto your tube. But the problem with that is if your spline's a little bit deep, you'll have a hard time getting your motor mount in past the wood piece. So I wanted to avoid that. And you can check your alignment, and I can see that my ring, that green, that's the green ring right there that you're seeing. When I'm flush with the lower ring, it is passed. We have an outhang like that. Now, the other thing we have to watch out for in this assembly is where our motor hook is. This is the side that goes to the body of the rocket. So we want to have the motor hook off to the side or out to the back, um, the opposite side of its body. So we do still have our shock cord ran through like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a wooden dowel and our white glue because we are doing a motor mount. And I'm going to get glue just past this section right here inside the tube. And we're just going to take and dip this into the glue, get a glob on the end. We're going to stick it in there just past the mark and smear it around with a stick. And look inside, yeah, I got a good smear all the way around, so we're good with that. All right, now, on to the fun part. We're going to take our tube, we're going to slip it just inside like that. We're going to put our cap back on our glue real quick. If I was using wood glue, this would already grab and I wouldn't be able to do it. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around the inside, right on the edge just by turning it. This is going to take care of our rear tube. Now again, I've got my part to the rocket, going to the rocket, the engine hook on the opposite side from the slits. 
just slide it right up there and I'm going to stop flush. I'm wiping the excess off and let that set up. We're going to be using the wood glue next. And this has a really big wide tip on the end. I don't like that tip, so I'm going to use a skewer or a small wooden dowel to put, uh, put the glue on. So we have a notch on one end and not on the other end. That notch goes to the rear or to the side with just the one slot, not with the two slots. That notch sits into the lower hook assembly. It has a little piece right there that that notch grabs onto so it can't come out. It actually hooks into that so it can't come out. So we want to make sure we have everything lined up the correct direction. So I'm going to take and get some glue on my skewer here. And my glue's gotten awful thick. It's been sitting for a while. So I'm just going to kind of dab it along. Glue all the way up and down this thing. And you see that I'm not putting glue on those notches because the only place they actually touch the rocket is the sides of the tube where they go in at. And the fillet will take care of that later on. Now, one of the neat things about wood glue is after you set it on, if you dab it with your finger, a little bit runny here. If I can take it, I can dab it all along with my finger, spread it out a little bit more evenly, just like this. This glue is really, really thick from sitting around for a while. I'm going to kind of wipe my sides here because I have a lot of excess there. Now I can let this sit just like this for about 30 seconds and it's going to start setting up even more. I do this when I do fins. And I'm not doing through the body. I'm actually mounting fins to the outside body. I'll let my glue set up for 30 seconds to a minute before I even apply it to the body tube. And that gives it a time to really set up so it grabs and your fin's not going to sag over or turn, especially if you're using something to hold everything parallel. Uh, you can use an engineering square to hold everything straight, and you can eyeball it all in and get it all nice and straight. So now we're going to take, and we're, you'll see the line. I use my angle iron to draw that line, so I have something to line up on. We'll drop our piece in. And we'll line up on it. They are slightly warped but it's more important to make sure that you just have them straight up and down. I'm going to push it into place. You can take a piece of tape. I'm not really pushing a lot down a lot. Just enough to make sure that the glue doesn't come up. I'm going to check to make sure I'm still square and I've actually pulled it out of square. I'm actually not going to use the tape because you're more apt to pull it out of square. You don't want it angled off to the tube. You want it straight up and down. So we're going to make sure we have that. Let me get this all lined up nice and pretty. That front wants to pull up. Okay, so we're going to set this off to the side and let that dry up really well. And we can get on to the next step of the construction. Alright, so while the other parts are drying, we can start prepping uh, our hooks, or our, these are the parts that mount to the rocket you're going to put the pods on. There are some molding or uh, processing edges where you have like a seam, and you can sand that off with 220, it sands off quite nicely, and it kind of leaves it a little rough. Uh, you can turn around and take a popsicle stick and wrap it with some uh, sandpaper and get into the hard to reach places. It sands very, very easily. After you get done with the 220, I would recommend grabbing some uh, 400. Uh, wet dry or just regular 400 works fine. And then you can fine sand everything and look for little defects, uh, dimples or whatever, and sand them down. 
uh, if you don't like the way the conformical sanding is, if you think it's not good, uh, you can correct it by taking sandpaper and wrapping it around your body tube, holding your piece, make sure you're straight so you want to eyeball it, and go back and forth, nice and gentle, make sure you're going straight, and that'll fix any discrepancies in the conformical sanding and it'll make it fit that particular body tube. So if it doesn't fit your body tube, nice and flush, by doing that, you can get it even tighter up against it. Don't fine sand that. You want this to actually be a rough uh, edge because that's the edge that's gonna get the glue to the rocket. So make sure that that stays nice and rough. And again, keep it in line. Make sure you're going straight back and forth. Uh, I did this for my QCC Explorer for the pods, and it made the pods fit flush real pretty uh, on the rocket. If this is something you've never done before, test it out on a piece of like a, a piece of balsa block. Yeah, it's like a piece of balsa block. You can sit there and sand it and make it uh, fit that way. I've actually taken that and used a balsa block to make a root edge for a fin. And then once you, you're happy with your, your sanding and that everything looks nice and pretty and it's fitting flush, uh, you don't have any high spots or low spots, you can go ahead and uh, start the rest of your prep. This is a great method for conformical sanding to exactly fit a body tube. You just have to make sure you're going straight along the tube and not going at angles. And you can see there was a, a little bit of a holding bump right there. Uh, not the easiest to see shadow to cast. Not really. You can kind of see the shadow cast right there. And that's what I'm trying to get rid of right now is that little uh, molding bump. And by sanding straight and back and forth like this, it'll make it to where everything sits level on the rocket. So we're going to finish doing that sanding and then. Uh, We'll get to uh, see how the glue is drying. Once all the glue is dried up, we'll go ahead and start mounting things. Uh, finish the assembly of the pods. These actually won't get mounted until I build the, the uh, Vagabond. These will get mounted to the uh, Vagabond. All right, so we've had a chance to let this dry. And now that our uh, straight -egg steak, or however you want to call it, is dried on there, we're going to add a little bit of strength to that with a couple of glue fillets. So my first glue fillet is going to be pretty thin. And I'm going to use this block to help hold it in upright position so we don't have the glue sagging to the left or to the right. So I'm going to run a tiny bead. Along here. Just not just shy of all the way. I'm going to kind of scooch it to the end, wipe my finger, and then drag it most of the way across. As soon as I start getting a lot of glue build up on my finger, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off. I'm going to come back and pick up where I left off. You can rotate your finger as you go along, and that'll help uh, lengthen the time before you have to wipe your finger again. And you're picking up the excess glue. Now, by stopping shy of the end and then carrying the glue over, I've carried the glue past that end. I'm going to make another swipe, and I'm rotating my finger again, and that's actually pushing the glue over to that very end piece that I didn't uh, actually apply glue at. Now I can rotate it over the other direction, do the exact same thing, and I'm being careful not to get any glue in, not in the notch on the uh, strake. Stop shy. And back it up into that gray tail in there, and then Rotate my finger and drag a little bit more glue on this side than I did the other, so. And again, we're going to rotate and drag. And I'm not trying to get a lot of glue on this first fillet. I'm just trying to get it sealed down there good and tight. The second fillet I can leave a little bit heavier if I desire. I just want to make sure I've got everything sealed up there really good. Now I'm going to rotate it up straight so the glue doesn't sag. I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side to dry. And I've got my shop pretty warm with a kerosene heater, so it'll dry pretty fast. 
something you're not seeing me do with my glue bottle. I, every time I use my glue bottle, I wipe the tip to make sure I get all that excess glue off the top before I put it back up. I do that with all my glue bottles, make sure the tips are always clean. So we're gonna let those dry and then we'll get on to attaching nose cones and streamers. All right, we're doing our second fillet on the uh, tubes. So what I'm doing is I'm going to lay a little bit larger of a bead, not much, all the way down this strut. Now this strut will be taking some of the stresses of the motor's firing. And now I'm smoothing it, but I'm actually not wiping it off as much as I am just evening it out along the distance of the strut here. Okay. Now we get the other side. And then we're going to let this glue, glue dry really, really, really good. See if there's any sinks or any uh, air pockets or voids that pop out of it. And we'll fill those. This really is not going to be as visible. It's going to be right up against the rocket. So cosmetically, I'm not as worried about it looking really pretty. I do like to have my rockets look the best I can make them. Uh, but... This is more for strength than anything else, so I want to make sure it's strong. So now I'm going to turn them so they're both facing upward. The glue is not going to run and sag, and we'll let that dry thoroughly before we uh, inspect and possibly do any more fillets on it. All right, so we've had a chance to let this dry overnight, and uh, we did another glue fillet after a while of it sitting and drying and we let it dry out nice and pretty. It looks good. Uh, made sure that any little gaps from where this uh, supports piece of wood went in are sealed up nice and good. So now it's time to take it to the next step. So I'm gonna push the shock cord back through. And we're gonna attach our nose cone. Make sure we don't snag on the hook. Now we hold it all the way through. So we'll attach it to the nose cone. And what I like to do is just throw a whole bunch of loops. It's inside the rocket. It doesn't have to be pretty. And then after I've thrown a whole bunch of loops, I'm going to pull them down, cinch them up. And we're going to put a drop of CA glue on that. And this is thin CA glue, so it sucks right into that material real quick. And now that knot's never going to come undone. It's nice and tight. The next thing we have to worry about is how do we make sure we don't have a lot of wear and tear putting motors in and out of this tube. Eventually it's going to wear and it's going to start... Uh, denting and tearing up. Well, I figured that solution out a long time ago. I have a towel, this thin CA glue, and we're going to have our little stick with some uh, 220 sandpaper. You can have uh, 320 if you want. We're going to take and we're going to put just a very light coat of CA glue, glue inside the motor mount tube and I'm going up about a quarter inch inside the tube. Now what it's going to do is it's going to soak in and after a couple of seconds of soaking in we're going to quickly wipe out the excess so there's not a build up anywhere. Keep your egg moving or your glue in there. Now we're going to let that dry and after that dries that's going to harden the tube. Then we can take our wooden dowel and we can sand that and I've already done this application to the first tube. So now I can take, and that is hard and dry, and I'm going to lightly sand and feather my edges with this. And we can check to make sure that a motor will slide in easily. 
and lo and behold, motor slides in easy. So now you pull it out. Now the other option you have is you can actually not use your engine hook at all. You can clip it off if you want and just use tape around the motor and the motor mount tube to hold it in place. Uh, if I have problems with uh, the tube getting damaged, a lot of times I'll end up cutting this off and going to that method because I can sand and fix the dents in the tube. So that's a great way of reinforcing part of the tube that it just gets torn up over time and now you can sand the edge and feather it. It's not going to really tear it up that badly. So attaching the two inch mylar in the instructions, they want you to attach it on your cord. They say use a packing tape. So you want to use something other than scotch or masking tape, obviously. Uh, like the packing tape that has the strings is a good one. Uh, you can take and you can lay it down and then take your streamer and put it up to the, uh, on one piece of the tape, lay it down and fold the tape over the shock cord onto the other side of your streamer and now it's holding. We'll show how to do that after uh, we get to that part in time. I'm not going to put the streamers on yet because I still have to do some more painting. Uh, we're going to do some primer and uh, filler and get all these spirals filled in so that this looks nice and pretty when we get it done. So we've had a chance to let all the uh, glue harden up and dry in the tail where we did the super glue or the CA glue. Now we're going to go over kind of how this works. We have to make sure that our hook fits properly in the nose cone. There's a notch in the nose cone and it basically this hook sits on the wooden support and then the nose cone slides on that. Now if it doesn't quite fit, there's a little bit of a space or a gap, you can either file down on this, which to me would make it weak and I don't like that idea, or do what I did in this case is I actually extended this hole and whittled out a little on the side of the uh, nose cone so now that it uh, is a little bit larger hole it'll hold it. So that locks on that way. How does this work? Well remember in the very beginning it has a little notch in the tail piece here and that notch is going to hook onto that little piece in there so it keeps it from coming off. This is attached to the rocket on the top and the bottom. So that notch keeps it from falling this way, the hook keeps it from falling this way. At the ejection charge, hold this at a slight angle, it fires the nose cone off. Well the nose cone comes off and that hook is attached to the rocket. Now it's going to drag it away and as it drags away it's going to fall off. So it drags it away and falls off the rocket. So it's a pretty ingenious way uh, to be able to add some fancy uh, eye spectacle. <laughs> I love eye spectacle for when you do a launch. So now you can ooh and ah people uh, launching your rocket and you'll see the, the pods jump off and they'll be like, oh, it's really, really like, uh, fun to do this. Time to mount the pod. So we need the top bracket, the bottom bracket, and our pod. We're going to be mounting the bottom bracket first. We use the pod to place the top bracket in the appropriate location. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert the top bracket and lock it into place. Now that nose cone is pretty loose on there so I'm going to take a piece of tape, fold it over the top, I'm going to push down on that nose cone to make sure it's cinched down tight and that's going to hold the nose cone in for me. So now I can take and lay my rocket down and we're going to glue the bottom strut on first. So here we have our pod mark. You can see I already did one side. Now we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to set this down. And I want to make sure that I line this up straight. The flat end goes to the bottom. I want to make sure that it all lines up straight. just like that is about how we're going to do it. So what I need to do, get my CA glue, just put a little dab on the bottom, just kind of ran a stripe of it, flip it over, be sure to center it, don't glue your fingers to the rocket, and then just some light pressure to get it to lock on. So now I can take and I can put a little dab of 
couldn't see on top is going to sink in around and make contact anywhere where it needs to. And then I can dab up the excess. Remember, dab quickly, otherwise your cloth will glue. And now we're ready to do the top. So for the top, it's a little bit different. Again, we've got it locked in. So now we're going to do our little dab of glue. And this is going to be kind of fun to do to where you can see everything that I'm doing. Hopefully. So you can see the back tail hook there. We're going to run a little stripe of glue. We're going to lock in to the back strut and then center everything up and drop it into place. And everything lined up nice and straight. We can give it a little pressure. I'm going to carefully peel off the tape, pop off my nose cone, and detach. And now we have our pod. And again, everything's kind of angled because my camera's angled here, so it looks funny. But now we have our pod hooked up. And it's going to load quite nicely. Engine hook's actually be a little bit in the way here. And there's a pod mounted on. And again, the nose, nose cone comes off. And it allows this to fall away. So it's a really good concept that uh, Tim Van Milligan uh, put into play. I can't remember who he credited it, uh, giving him the design idea. So I'm going to put a little bit more CA glue right here on the top. And let it wick its way in. And again, I've got a towel ready to go. And wipe up any dribbles that come out from the bottom of the sides. So we stand it up, there's all our dribble. Wipe that off. Keep an eye on it for a few seconds, make sure no more comes out. I could use the uh, quick set or accelerator, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just let that dry naturally. So there we go, we've got our pods ready. Um, I'm going to fill it all around all this. We'll get everything uh, primed after we do our fillets and I'm going to use white glue for all my fillets and after we're primed and ready we can start paint. So uh, we've got our primer coats on and we've done our sanding on our booster pods or our strap on boosters. Now we're going to mark it up to do our roll pattern and what I've done is I've got my angle iron with a block tape to it so now I can have a bump point. I use my engine hook as my guide for halfway and I drew a line straight down so now I've divided the tube into two halves and I want to go it's a 12 inch tube so I went to the 6 inch uh, which is center mark the 6 inch now I can just hold my uh, pencil in place and rotate the tube one way and then flip things over and rotate it the other way and I've got a mark in half so now I can do my pattern uh, black black white white So what I do is I cut my tape longer than I need it, and I cut the end square using a, a cutting mat. I make sure everything's nice and square. So we're going to set up in our corner first, and that's all we're going to do is we're just literally going to put it right here in the corner and just barely press it down. And it's not even straight. And I'm going to come down here to my bottom line. I'm going to line up right on the line. I'm going to press it down there. Now I'm going to pack up here. I'm going to straighten it up and I'm going to make sure I'm actually in that corner where I want it to be now. Okay, I'm going to lightly push that in now. And I'm going to follow my circle around. You can see I got it pretty squared up with my uh, roll pattern there. Actually came out pretty close to exactly the way I want to. I'm going to make sure I press it into the corner and work it all the way up. Overlap a little bit here. 
pull it back the halfway point right there and continue to seal. Now we need to burnish our edge with our fingernail or thumbnail and just burnish the edge and just go back and forth over it and that sets it in place on the body tube. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the lower section. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to spray white one more coat. And that's going to seal the tape edges so I don't get any color bleed under the tape. After that coat's had a chance to dry, I'll paint my black. Let that dry. Peel the tape off. And then give it a day or two to thoroughly dry. Then I'll go back and I'll do my clear coat over everything. And I'll have my black white pattern. And everything's going to look really, really good. All right, so we've got the paint peeled, uh, the tape peeled off from our <clears throat> roll pattern, and you can see that the lines come out fairly sharp when you uh, pre-paint with the same color as your base color, as it seals the uh, the lines off so that there's no bleed underneath the uh, tape. And then I can take some 4,000 grit sandpaper, even 400 grit will do it, and knock off this edge right along here. That's a little rough and along here and then I can do my clear coat. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to actually paint the nose cone red or if I'm going to leave it the red that it's actually uh, came in it, uh, plastic was molded in. Uh, you can see my paint stick is nothing more than a, a C motor, an 18 millimeter motor with a stick shoved up in the hole just the same size as the uh, core and then uh, tape around it to hold it in place. So it gives me something nice to put it on when it's drying and uh, to hold it while I'm painting it. So you can see it came out really really well. Um, I'm pretty happy with this roll pattern. It's very close right there at the corners. It lined up really, really nice. So we're going to get the other one done and then we'll get uh, this primed and painted here shortly.